Um, so I'm Lauren Lindenbrink with the Iowa Association for the Education of Young Children. And you mentioned a crisis when you were talking earlier that we are seeing, and like many parts of the country, Iowa is in child care crisis right now. And so I'm going to share some data points with you. So I'd like to just, I want to make sure everybody sees that. And tell me your name again. Lauren. Lauren. And just for every American to really take in what she just said, because I think sometimes we're also overloaded with data, it just runs by us. We're Americans, and what you just said was that Iowa is in an early, what was your phrase? Child care crisis. Child care crisis. See, we have so many crises that we're not even registering crises as crises. <laughs> right? We're in crisis fatigue. So the way to get past that is, can we just take that in? Because what that means is such a perversion of our priorities. It, let's be very clear. It's not that America doesn't have money. It's where we're putting our money. All right, please go on, because okay. I want everybody to know what you're saying. Um, so there are communities across the state um, that are suffering because parents can't afford or they can't apply, uh, find reliable child care. Um, within the past five years, Iowa has lost over 40% of its registered child care providers. The average annual cost of child care is nearly the same as college tuition at our state colleges. And in 2016, almost 18,000 Iowa parents were recorded to quit a job, not take a job, or change a job because of child care issues. Uh, when parents have to leave their job and are unable to work due to child care issues, it has a ripple effect into the community. So my question for you, as president, what actions would you take to ensure that all families can afford child care and early education so children are prepared to enter school um, and parents can work? The term that so many people use today is intersectionality. So I'm old enough that I remember there actually was a time when one person could stay home and one person could work and the average American, the average American could raise two to three children just fine with one parent working and one parent at home. Now, if both parents want to work, I'm all for that. But we first have to go deeply into the issue that of why child care is needed by so many people to begin with. And that is in large part because of people having to work, having both people to work. Mm -hmm. And then that's not even talking about how many millions of Americans have to work more than one job. Mm -hmm. So anytime there is that level of societal stress, the first people to have to carry the burden of the stress is the children. Because it means there's, mommy and daddy aren't going to be home enough. Mommy and daddy are going to be too tired at the end of the day to read them the bedtime story, to listen to their issues, etc. So for me, I don't want to just attack a symptom. And that's why the underlying issue, you know, the underlying cancer of all of, our, uh, uh, all of these things is the undue influence of money on our political system. Because what that does is it has sucked our resources into the hands of a very few people whose financial interests are being represented by these huge multinational corporate interests. So economic justice is everything. So first of all, I want to right and to balance the economic system in the United States. The economic system right in the United States through the repeal of the 2017 tax cut, which gave $2 trillion uh, to the wealthy, it, it's almost it's, it's almost too much. You almost have to like take a deep breath. So we gave give away two trillion dollars as under the guise it was an economic stimulus, whereas eighty three cents of every dollar went to the very richest individuals and uh, corporations. We repealed that, then we uh, we put back in the middle class tax cuts. We stop the corporate subsidies that I mentioned earlier. We make it so that the United States government can, in fact, negotiate with big pharmaceutical companies so, uh, to lower drug prices. You look very closely at your military spending for how much money goes up above and beyond what the military says they need. You ask for a 3% tax on the assets of billionaires, 2% tax on the assets of those with 50 million and more. What do you have then? Cash on hand. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use that money to do those things that will actually help people, th people thrive. All public policy, in my opinion, both domestic and international, should be built around the core issue of what helps people thrive. First of all, a lot of the people that you're talking about dealing with the health care crisis, a large part of their budget is on health care. 
So this goes back to not only your need for it, but also the huge amount of people's money that has to be spent. It has to do with how much of the money that many of the people that you're talking about is having to spend on paying off their college loans. Thank you very much. It has to do with families who are trying to put, to put away some of that money so that their children can someday go to college. That's what this whole intersectionality thing is about. Everything relates to everything. So you take away from people to worry about the money they spend on health care. You take away from people uh, the issue of the money that they're trying to put away to give their child for college because the child will have free tuition at, at state colleges and universities. You take away the college loan because you just cancel them. That's an economic stimulus right there because people can participate right there. People start to breathe better. Because, and it will mean more people and the season of repair that is needed in this country. It's not gonna all get fixed immediately. There's no magic wand. We have a big ship that we need to turn around. But everything that I just said is going to contribute to situations where the parents that you're talking about can breathe can breathe financially, can breathe economically, because they're going to be living in a society and living uh, under the ages of a government whose policies indicate care, <laughs> indicate that, they, that, that we see value in help. It, it, that's, that's the thing that is so wrong. It is valuable to American society that these children have everything they could possibly need to thrive. It is of value to American society that parents have time and space to be with their children. So the, the child care crisis is a symptom. And that, that's what I'm trying to say. I see the whole thing holistically. And we, we have to get down to the cause rather than the effect. And those are the kinds of things that begin to, uh, that begin to uh, make themselves uh, more easily uh, cared for. I also think it would be very good if government would incentivize certain corporate systems in terms of child care in the buildings, mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. like that. We could say to big companies, and some companies do, where they have child care right. in, in, but we could make it easier, make it sweeter. You know, you, you, you employ this many, uh, this many uh, people with children, it will be better for American society. If you have a child care uh, uh, um, situation in the building and you make it so that on lunch breaks, breaks, whatever, the things, you know, and you're starting to see things get better. I'm starting to see, I was over at a, speaking at a university the other day and I saw that they had a place for the women who were breastfeeding. You know, I believe the American people are ready for this. We just have to drag the government along. Mm -hmm. And the American people are ready for a more child-centric. So that's what I would do. And I would make it as sweet as possible uh, for corporations who actually feel that there was a financial incentive. Uh, and, and listen, they know, by the way, one of the crises that they're going through is that all these women who were supposedly entering the marketplace and getting higher education, they're like, how with this? I want to go home and be with my babies. So it is actually, there are many corporations knowing that they need to sweeten the pie so that women will choose to work, et cetera. I understand what these larger holistic issues uh, are, and like everything else we're talking about, I'm on it.